appreciate so many people sticking it out to the end. Our final speaker for the evening is Brian Tso, um, talking about the Serbian colleges. Thank you. Thank you. And now for something different. <laughs> so if you had this as a quiz first, okay, if you're going to Tahiti, how many of you would do this? Go dive. <laughs> That's all? <laughs> how many of you would go surfing? How many would you would do both? All right, then you're already surfing ecologists. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Actually, it's, it's a lot more than that. So what I want to do is first talk briefly about the motivation for the idea of surfing ecologists, a little bit what inspired me to think about creating a group like this and then what we can actually do with it and why it might be fun, but yet also important. And the motivation goes back to this, that you know, as a 13-year-old, I started surfing, and lucky I had to live in San Diego. And as most of you know, surfing inspires a passion for the ocean that is really quite unparalleled in anything. And so in the motivation of the thirst for waves, which never ends, you have to learn to master the tides, the waves, the winds, the water, and of course, that curiosity is what drove me to college, which wasn't science, okay? So when I went to Cal Poly, it was mainly because there was good waves there. <laughs> but luckily, but of course, I had great professors, so I ended up being a marine biologist. But I have not forgotten the idea that surfing was a core, and still is a core part of my life. And I think that's really important because passion is what drives a lot of us. Our intellect is important, but our passion is what keeps us through. And so I came up with the idea when I was thinking about the 100th anniversary, and this is the first meeting that I went to, this was back in 1980. My advisor was Dave Montgomery. He used to drag me in his office and we'd stuff envelopes because they used to mail out the uh, newsletters for years. And he basically told me, finally, I had to go to a meeting. We used to meet every four years for the American Society of Zoologists. These were big, huge meetings. Of course, my first one was one of those and I was scared to death. But that was 37 WSNs ago. And as much as I feel like we've made a lot of progress, I also feel like we're, so, we're losing the battle in some ways, you know? And I think we need to start thinking about doing things differently as well as keep doing what we're doing. And so the idea of that, of thinking back and reflecting on my career as a marine biologist, is that science is absolutely necessary. We have to do it, it's really important. Everything you do for research is key, but it's not enough by itself. And that is there's other things we have to do. One of those, we have to influence management and policy. I think we know that. We also have to influence public perception. That's really, really important. So the idea of surfing ecology is to drive something new that's creative and impactful, but also adds another ally to our arsenal, so to speak. And so with that in mind, surfing ecology is really thinking about the idea of how does a surfing lifestyle when dedicated to riding waves and living in the coastal environment, how does that inspire scientific research and education on marine ecological issues? And the idea is, what does surfing tell us about what's important in the ocean? And I think it's a different perspective, a different way of thinking about marine problems. And the inspiration for this is the idea of surfing doctors. How many of you heard of those? Yeah, most people haven't, and, but you know, it was really interesting that they have existed for quite a while. They've been around for about 15 years. And these are medical doctors that are also surfers that have formed their own organization, excuse me, and do all sorts of really cool stuff. And I was lucky enough to be invited to a conference in the south of France last year. And uh, they asked me to come and talk about marine ecology, which is really a challenge, but an interesting group. And I really had a good time with these guys. And so this is what they do. They have regular meetings just like this, you sit here, and have talks. You also have poster sessions on you know, medicine related to surfing. We also do, and this is what something I learned from this, is they do lots of fun things. They do hands-on work. They also have like a paddle out in the morning and they actually have surfing built into the schedule. So note for future WSN exercises. They also have their own journal. And so they actually publish articles, mostly online, about issues relative to surfers for medicine. And what they're asking again is how does surfing influence medicine? And most of these people are either physicians or they're nurse practitioners or they're med students or they're internships and they're all professionals. And this was the European Association for they're mostly Europeans for the most part. 
And so the typical kind of lectures, instead of what we're talking about, would be about skin cancer, injuries, how to hold your breath, how to handle cold water, you know, some of the ideas about how medicine applies to that. And again, they have lots of hands-on things, so you can actually go down to the beach and you do things. And of course, they have them in really cool places like the south of France, which happens to be the birthplace of surfing in Europe. Uh, this year, they're meeting in Ireland. They were in uh, all, sorts, all sorts of good places like Fiji in the past. And they also have time to go surfing into the schedule. So imagine that, one to three o'clock, surfing down at Dewanti Beach, right? And so I gave a talk on surfing ecology and in terms of marine ecology. And the idea is to summarize what is marine conservation? What are the key things you need to know? And it was really pretty simple once I thought about it. Is one is that we all need to help the ocean. That servers shouldn't just care about clean water or waves. They should also think about the other critters and the ocean itself are really, really important. Secondly, that healthy oceans are resilient. We have clean water, we have intact ecosystems and habitats, and with those, the biggest challenge is climate change. And I had most of my time was spent on climate change and how surfers can influence that. But ultimately, I also said that surfers are natural ambassadors, and those are things that people listen to. People listen to surfers like they listen to us as scientists, maybe not as much, and so they should get out there and advocate for the ocean. And so I created a video, which I don't think is gonna play here. Stop this for a second. Thank you. <laughs> the idea was to inspire people to get interested in the idea that we're all connected. And so healthy oceans are important for all of us, but especially for surfers and especially for marine ecologists. And it turns out I was preaching to the choir. All these folks were very, very environmentally focused. And in general, my impression is Europeans are much more environmentally focused than Americans as a whole. And so it was, uh, again, kind of preaching to the choir. So what is a surfing ecologist and what can it do and why should we create it? So this is the idea, is that the intersection of marine ecology, surfing is one intersection and the other one could be if you mix it with environment and conservation. So the idea that if you just look at surfing and marine ecology, well that could be, I don't know how many of you are out surfing and you have your st head stuck under the water looking at the reef. That's kind of the natural history of surfing, right? So you just more care about more of the reef than you do the surf, or equally much, or you, you know, alternate back and forth, right? <laughs> and so just studying the marine life could be kind of the natural history of surfing ecology. But if you want to apply that to environmental problems that are focused on solving problems or identifying problems, then that's more of kind of the applied surfing ecology. So that's one way of thinking of it. Why would surfing be a good partner in this? Well, they're a lot like marine ecologists. And what could we do is we can focus on ocean health, which they already do in many ways, focus on conservation, the well-being of surfer, but very importantly, the coastal zone. Surfers are very much in tune to that. 
And surfing is a really important part of this, is that in surfing, like science, inspires dedication and passion, often a lifetime's devotion to that. People that are surfing spend a significant time in and under the water and in the coast, and so they're getting tuned, like we do, with the Earth's problems, with the rhythms of the ocean. We understand some of the issues that influence us. These are the people that get sick when the water's polluted, and you probably heard there was a guy that actually died last year from polluted water in San Diego. That's how bad it gets. The estimate says there's 35 million surfers worldwide. And so there are a huge number of individuals out there. And they're very diverse. Not only do you have little kids that are surfing and their parents, but also uh, people up into their 90s that are still out surfing. And they occupy all positions of government, you know, professionals, organizations, schools, you name it, very ingrained in the culture. And many times they can be very strong ambassadors for the ocean, right? The hands across the sand, which protests a lot of beach development. Uh, if you remember, Trestles was there, gonna build a freeway there. It was defeated twice, largely by surfers protesting. And so they can be a really important ally in the idea of surfing ecology. And of course, why should marine ecologists be part of this? Well, the truth is we're very similar. Marine ecology also inspires passion and energy we spend a lot of time in and on the water, and, and we're also, there's millions of us. I don't know how many. I couldn't actually get a number, but I assume there's a lot of people. And like that, like surfers, we're also major agents of change in a different way. Part of what we do is we have very diverse approaches, whether they're biological or physical, chemical, geological. We do research, which can identify and solve problems. We do education, which can be agents of change, and very much so we can influence policy and management. But also, we have very strong connections of education all the way through preschool, all the way up into public education, and of course, higher ed specifically. And so I think joining these two forces can be really important to thinking about how we could solve some problems. So what I want to show you is some examples of some things that might work. Probably the easiest thing to do is work with organizations that are already doing some of this. As you may know, Surfrider is very, very much focused as an environmental arm of surfing. And they're huge. There's about a quarter million surfrider members in the United States alone. And so they do a lot of work on ocean health, coastal development, and marine debris, all sorts of programs like that. So getting involved with them is a pretty easy way to do that. Another group which is really important in California, Hill the Bay, does a lot of water quality work and monitoring of streams, marine debris work. And then also, just like MPAs, there are surf preserves. How many of you heard of those? You should, because there's one right here. The idea of reserve reserves are places that have kind of a special status, and so therefore get special treatment. So one of those, there's a bunch of those in the United States and other parts of the world, is right here in Santa Cruz. And if you haven't seen it, the surf reserve goes from Natural Bridges State Park all the way over to the Hook, 21 surf spots, seven different uh, sites. It's part of the National Marine Sanctuary. It's part of the Natural Reserve System. And so there's lots of opportunities for collaboration there. And then for each site, they kind of have, you know, a little primer on the surf spots and what the issues are with respect to climate change or sea level rise or things like that. So there's an opportunity to collaborate around surfing reserves. The other one is this new thing I've just heard about. Hopefully, if you've heard of SmartFin, which is a really nice idea. I have a really short video for that as well. They're not out yet. They're still being tested, but you can go on the Surfrider website and sign up for one. So, and students, you can 
get one, and when your advisor asked you what you did over the weekend, you said, collected data. <laughs> Lots of data. <laughs> and the last thing I'll end with is blogging. I think we heard a lot about this this morning, and it's you know, something that you know, people in my generation probably haven't thought about too much, but about three years ago, I started blogging, and part of it, in retrospect, is to justify it, is you get a lot more people reading blogs than you do going to scientific conferences. You know? It's not that scientific conferences are not important. I want to reemphasize that. Really, really important what we're doing here. But there's other ways we need to reach people. And so part of the idea of with surfing ecology is to blog. I developed my blog about three years ago. And some of the things I cover are just basic science, but some of them are really science that's specific to surfers. So the idea of culling sharks, believe it or not, is a very popular idea with a lot of surfers because there's been a lot of attacks. And so what I simply did is review the literature, talked about the pros and cons of this, which are mostly cons, <laughs> and, you know, but presented the facts and let people decide for themselves. But there's just no information. So surfers don't read scientific journals for the most part and try to get things from out. Some of the other ones I've done had to do with uh, global warming, why surfers specifically should care about that. This was the blog post that the European doctor saw and they invited me to that conference just from this post and paid my way, as I should add. So walking does have some benefits. Some other ones, uh, this is about Mavericks, which you know is a great surf spot, but, but I talk about the reef and marine life and things like that, in addition to the wave. And then some other ones about this kind of 101 for science conservation. And so, in conclusion, you know, surfing ecology is a neat idea. I think the idea is just to get the word out there that this is something that exists. It has a name now, and now we have a website too. And so at surfingecologist.com, you can go there. Some of the things that you might be able to do would be send me some links or do some news, or if you feel like blogging a post, be glad to add you to this, and you can do that. There's about five people that are involved so far. And of course, just letting people know about it would be great. So with that, thank you. Yeah.